What's up, everybody? I want to talk about something today. We always open the podcast with kind of our beefs or a little something like that. And uh, my beef this week is simple. I'm tired of everything going so well. I have played many a card game in my life. I know Dane has. And there's always something wrong. Something happens. There's something catastrophic. They do something terribly. And you know what? I just can't handle the fact that LSS is doing things so well right now. It, it absolutely is blowing my mind. And it, uh, I just, I don't know. I feel like we need to talk about it tonight. We need to air it out there. It's just a personal grievance of mine. Things are too perfect and they just keep getting better. And I, I don't know that we can live in a card game world where there's nothing to complain about with the company that makes the game. So tonight in the Outcast Haven, we're going to start with some grievances. Outcast Haven podcast starts now. So, I have an issue with what you just said, because you have something that you don't like. Do we want to start with an actual grievance? Do I actually have a grievance? What's my you grievance? You mentioned it. You mentioned it yesterday. And you were like, I love LSS, but this genuinely pisses me off. Do you remember what it was? Are you I don't remember so, what it was. Are you so happy and over the moon? I'm so, I'm so over the moon. We got, I think I we got these bad yeah. <laughs> Little teaser. These, if, if you're expecting it to be like, we got three. If you're expecting yeah. it to be like items or something like we got last time, yeah. you are wrong. So, dude, this is so fucking spicy. The fact, I said it in a tweet. If Oh, by the way, Twitters are on our YouTube video if you're listening. Also, we're tracking our subs now on the video. Mm -hmm. You can see what we're currently at because our giveaways of the heralds are going to be tied to every 100 subs that we hit. So going to try and push through a plateau a little bit here and see if that gains us any traction or if you guys want heralds yeah. or if I mean, nothing's going to move in for five years and then I'll sell them. Or, no, yeah. we won't do that. I mean, LSS, we won't yeah. do that. No, we won't. We won't do that. We're giving all of them away. So we, uh, but we, we do have a very important, um, if you notice the numbers, we, we have four sets of heralds to give away on the channel. We're going to give some heralds away on our Twitters, but we have actually five things, right? We have oh, five yeah. things that we're going to do. Because we're going to um, hit 2,000. At some point, Yeah, we are. At some point. And it's going to be worth it because there's going to be a special video on the channel, and that video will be uh, Dane and myself for maybe, sure. Maybe Jason. If we can talk maybe to Jason. Maybe Jason. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. But Dane and myself for sure will be visiting a tattoo shop and permanently marking ourselves with the Outcast Haven logo brand or, or logo brand. Or so we will we will permanently brand ourselves with our logo if you guys get us to 2000. So if that does anything for anybody, because it will be a hilarious video. If you think the vlogs that people put up from like the Pro Tour are great, <laughs> imagine a vlog where we go and get a logo for a YouTube channel tattooed on our body. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying if we hit it and like it's timed well and like I can get James White to sign my arm or something. Maybe I just, you know, people do. No, I wouldn't do that. I don't know if I, I don't know <laughs> if I could get another man's name tattooed on me. I feel like if that's the case, then that just that man just has permission to fuck you whenever. Like there's just yeah, like, who does that? He just owns you. He just owns you forever. <laughs> no. Um. Before we got off on the on the tangent, though. Yeah. Do you remember what? Do you remember what it was? I, was I really, I really don't. I really don't. The promos, man. Because I agree with it. I oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's like such a. It, it is a funny yeah. gripe. Like it's like the dumbest gripe ever in the world. And the fact that that's the thing that like yeah. bothers me right now is very telling. So Dane reminded me now. But the thing that bugs me, or my my biggest gripe or or issue with LSS right now is, can can we get a promo? for something that doesn't go into prism <laughs> it, anything like just I, and not i get that we get like our promos for our armories and armory mats and things like that technically prism got a month of that too but every time there's something there's judge promos there's content wow. it's like everything is like an extended art or prism which i guess really what we should do is we should just check because maybe we are almost done because she's 
got to be close to out of cards. She can't have that many more cards that are extended art. So maybe that's I the mean, plan. You've is still got you still so we got rebirths, war tunes, judgments. I thought the judgments was cool because it's a judge, like it's a judge. judge promo, yeah, right? yeah, makes sense, right? But I mean, you've still got triumphs. You've still got. Um, they did protections. They did protections already. I have yep. those. Honestly, it's more an issue because my wallet is like that SpongeBob gif where he's just like, <sighs> <sighs> like that's what my wa- <laughs> that's what my wallet does every time new ones come out. Yeah. Like, was it Jason or you that said like they need to punish simp's? Is what their their goal is? No, I, oh. I gotta give I gotta give credit where credit is due. Oh, so yeah, yeah. I was at I was at Armory on Tuesday at a local shop, Battlegrounds Cafe. Um, love those guys. It's a great shop to play at. We have a lot of locals that play there, but I was sitting next to Ben. Love Ben. Ben has, uh, a great, he's a, he's a, he's a dash truther, but he doesn't do the control dash thing. He loves ever since Teclo pounder has come out. It's just Teclo pounder to the max. He just <laughs> blows people out with that. And, uh, it, he was three Oh on Tuesday. It was really, it was, nice. he has, had a good showing. So, but I, we were sitting there joking about it. I said, can we please get a promo that doesn't belong to Prism? I would love that. And he said, you have to make Prism players pay their waifu tax. That's what it was. That's, that's, yeah. yeah. He goes, they got to pay their waifu tax. Like if they want to play the waifu, they got to pay the waifu tax. And I, and, I just came back. I was like, <laughs> what if I just have like a shine problem? Like that, the, the, like, which is totally fair. I mean, people have that, right? We know plenty right. of people I, that do like the max rarity thing locally. So, I, yeah, yeah, it's just I would I love Prism. I've got everything except for like the I didn't get the judgments because those right? are crazy and air editions because I sold mm-hmm. because they were also worth a shit ton of money. But everything else I've gotten so far, so I'm done. I'm good. Please stop. <laughs> <laughs> Give them to someone else. <laughs> But yeah, no, so that that's a genuine grievance. It's not all rainbows and puppy dogs, but yeah, it's it's a pretty big one too. In the in the grand scheme of things, no, it's not. It's they, <laughs> they get them out. I mean, that's that's probably the biggest thing. They get the promos out to people. They give out cool, interesting promos. I just wish they would target another market. You know, yep. I yep. as give it to somebody else. who doesn't play Prism. Um, but. I actually recalled too. I had cut my, myself off talking about our Twitter, but I tweeted about what our our uh, apparently people are just mm, like yep. showing parts of their card, which is like not cool. That's not what you're supposed to do. But yeah, <laughs> Jason but, said though that he's gonna sh- he's gonna spoil our card. Yeah, he's gonna on the sixth. So fuck, he's fuck, he's putting it out there on the sixth. Fuck the man. He's on the sixth. It's going out live. No, um, it's going live. that's our actual spoiler date or our actual yeah. date. So just so everyone's aware. <laughs> And doesn't tattle on us, but <laughs> this is this made me post a tweet where the fact that they can create a new mechanic within the game because it is this is a new mechanic. Well, not a new mechanic, but it's a new yeah. <clears throat> the focus of this ability. It's something that we've seen, but the way that it focuses on this yeah. mechanic is really unique and cool. And the fact that they can give that to a class that already has a mechanic and make it feel like it still belongs in that class. Yeah. Is so cool. It's kind of like the um I guess not really like Crush because they, yeah. they went away they, from Crush but like they still made the yeah. Guardian cards feel very Guardian-y, you know what I mean? Like without yeah. using the yeah. Crush word. Like Heave right. was like a new mechanic that they introduced that felt very Guardian-y. But yeah, yeah, like it's just it's so impressive the design space that they toy with and how they consistently mm-hmm. change it up. Like if they would have just, yeah, I don't, know. I can't say much more. But it's super fucking yeah, cool. yeah. And I'm really excited <laughs> to play with it. Yeah, it's it's cool to see everybody starting to get their spoilers. Like people are getting their spoilers, mm-hmm. and nobody's giving anything away. But people are, you know, s- s- subtly saying things and hinting at things but more importantly everybody just seems excited about their stuff mm-hmm. which is really really cool to see i th- i think that they're the way that they have spread things out is interesting and it's always cool to see how lss shares and spreads the love when it comes to spoiler season mm-hmm. and where things go and you know they're giving out the content creator kits to people that 
aren't necessarily getting spoilers sometimes they're trying to they're trying to, sp- to spread the the love out because there there definitely are a, a lot of people out there making content because they're excited for the game and they're trying to do their best to support everybody in some capacity so it's yeah. it's cool i mean we're we're coming up on you know what next week is is like it's hype season <laughs> i mean <laughs> like we're sure. today dude we get the new yeah. the new Dorinthia and reinar box which is going to be yep that's gonna be cool. I'm a little disappointed, like the Reinar stuff, but also I don't play Reinar, so that's cool. I, I'm fine with them. I, see what, what's weird though is I actually think that after seeing everything, my first thought was seeing the new Dorinthia mechanic mm-hmm. on her card. I thought, man, that totally rejuvenates her, like potentially. Mm-hmm. And seeing Dawn Blade Resplendent, it was like, ah, that I know. That's that was you know, disappointing too, because I was excited. I was like, yeah. "Cool, we're gonna have like a cool Dorinthia Blitz hero," but then yeah. like Don Blade doesn't doesn't seem maintain like it does. the counters. Yeah, it doesn't maintain yeah. them, and so then you're just in like the typical not good he- Blitz hero realm. The, the math, of yeah, to hit certain cards to make it good. It's like you need yep. to hit her specialization because they that'll add mm-hmm. a permanent counter, and they won't yep. fall off, which is cool. Yep. But you need to see them, right? Yeah, and then it makes it weird because, like, Oath of Steel, in theory, would be great because it would add counters. But if you see Oath of Steel after you see her specialization, you can remove the counters from her specialization. Mm -hmm. So now the card becomes bad because if you see it in the wrong order, you can't, you don't want to play Oath of Steel. And I don't know. But then you see the Reinar cards Mm -hmm. after they start to reveal them. And it's funny because... It didn't really reveal much for Reinar. And then when you saw certain things about him, it's like, well, he's getting Alpha Rampage. Oh, great. His ability didn't change. Are you kidding me right now? Mm-hmm. And then they revealed that headpiece, mm-hmm. which is so good. Yeah. And then they revealed that um, the the call card, the PAX call, yeah, yeah. where when you defend with it, you look at the top card of the deck. If it's a six, you leave it. If it's not, you bury it. Mm-hmm. And I get I get some people, they don't love the fact that that could like bury a bellow or um you know it could bury a blood rush bury a, a barraging or something like that but the fact that it helps you consistently hit on things like pulping and yeah. wild ride and and some of those things is is really good it just adds some consistency to the deck and i i, I think it's interesting because like his support cards he didn't get anything crazy like her Dorinthia's, I think specialization is really good in like a constructed Dorinthia deck, or even in just the original Dorinthia with the original Dawnblade. But everything else she got is pretty just okay. Whereas with Reinar, he didn't get anything like a crazy new weapon or an ability, mm-hmm. but like Pax Call and the headpiece, th- those are kind of auto includes. Like they become a filler in the deck. You replace another blue non six for a Pax Call blue because if you don't want it to pitch you use it to block and you can you drive your consistency up in the deck the little things that the deck did wrong it fixes a a minor issue with the deck which i think is in my opinion is really good design space Mm -hmm. that they're exploring where it's like how do you make reinar consistent without evolving the deck into a, a really oppressive aggro deck well he might need that blue to pitch but if he has two blues and like a pulping and he needs to just draw and discard. Well, now he can he can know that the card is there. He can confidently do it by blocking with that card. Or it's just it, it adds consistency, I think, to a deck that sometimes needs it, you know, you know what but I, in a good design space. My first thought when I saw the Dawn Blade Resplendent was like, okay, cool. Blitz, not this is not what I was looking for, hoping that was gonna be revealed for like the Blitz hero for OG yeah. or New Dorinthia, right? But Don Blade Resplendent in a control OG CC Dory build where because I mean what you're just swinging with Don Blade periodically anyways like I'm thinking like that Nick Butcher list that he ran yeah his, you know something yeah. like that where it's just super controlly like doing that <laughs> and being able to have three of those specializations and like finish out a turn with that and gaining a counter and now you're swinging for three for the yeah. rest of the game it's not going anywhere and then you hit another specialization and now you're swinging for four for the rest mm-hmm. of the game it's not going anywhere something like that i could see that being really interesting too so definitely yeah. not like don't buy but i do love that they didn't make anything in the set or anything in the box chase that was super right. yep. smart and i yep. think that's what we all were hoping was gonna be the case so mm-hmm. very again lss fucking stop it 
because like I genuinely <laughs> don't know what to do with myself because so much of all of like so much of yeah. our, our group's communication through like even Star Wars Destiny like DBS even Star Wars yeah. Destiny really a lot in Star Wars Destiny where like stuff was delayed all the fucking time but like DBS <laughs> every set um what else do we play we tried we did like UFS for a little bit like we like yeah. there's just always things to complain about and it's like I mean we're excited for tra- traveling to Vegas so we could talk yeah. about that <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think like we don't really have anything to fill our days with complaining. Yeah, which is which is a hilarious thing to exist in. But it did such a good job of the classic battles. It it falls into Mm -hmm. the category of like the perfect starter um, fluke and box. You know, fluke. He opened one because I see my thing was. I, I'm not typically one for opening stuff. That's just not my jam. I like I don't care when people open yeah. boxes of stuff. It mm-hmm. I just have zero interest in it. It's cool that people love to do it. I, I love Chris over at Unseals. Like I love Chris Sires and yeah. I love that he opens like the alpha product, you know, crack just, all the I just everything. Watch for his like, reactions. If you haven't seen his right. stuff, like yeah. just watch because when he gets something and starts shaking, yeah, it's fucking awesome. So he yeah, gets his, really his reaction is awesome. Yeah. It's it's worth thing. every bit of it. Like, yeah, not not our thing to open product. But I love that Fluke got his hands on one of those Reiner Jorinthia things and opened it so that way it was opened on release day because I was curious what was in it. Is everything mm-hmm. I've seen in like the random spoiled pictures, is that yeah. everything that's in it? Is there something else? What's the lore book look like? Mm-hmm. Do, do I want to go buy one? Right? right. That was my big thing. And even beyond that, if I don't buy one or I don't immediately grab one, do I want to recommend it when a new player mm-hmm. comes in? Um, I, I, that's always my thing. I want to know what to recommend to new players. And I talked to Craig. I know Chris Chris Bates was talking to Terrence one day, which is really cool over at TGG. I was talking to Craig at Battlegrounds and I said, Hey, I, I want to buy one, but I want to buy one to do like a giveaway. If we have like a couple new players, mm-hmm. I would love to do it like a giveaway or I'll buy one and I'll leave it at the store. And I, I know you guys will get it to it. If like two friends come in and they're looking for something, mm-hmm. they're like, Fab seems interesting. Want to start or be like, Hey, Give it this to them from it. me. Like, yep. Yeah, yeah. Yep. This, this guy like, bought it. Yeah. Got it on layaway for waiting for you. Yeah, yeah. That's yep. super cool. And I, I wanted to know that it was going to be like a good product that was worth doing that. And seeing mm-hmm. Fluke open it, I loved it. I was like, man, this product looks awesome. The mm-hmm. the lore book, like flipping it. Oh, it's like a flip book. So if mm-hmm. you open from one side, it's the Dory lore. And if you flip it over and open it the other way, it's the, it's the Reinar lore. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's just a really well designed product. The the Matt is basically a paper version of the OG rollout double sided like brown mat, hmm. and it, it's just Chef's kiss, man. It, yep. it was it was so well made, so well designed. I love that they did it. I love that to your point, they didn't throw like chase cards in there. You don't have to go buy it mm-hmm. to get something. I'll and, be honest, I'm know. really. I just didn't want to have to go and buy three to get my place <laughs> one of specialization. That's a must have for running a certain deck. You know what I mean, like seeing the Dorinthia specialization, I was like, okay, that's actually pretty interesting. Is it one in a box? I'm going to have to go buy three boxes and like give mm-hmm. the rest of it away, you know, but it's not, I mean, it's not even necessarily like a must have card. I'll buy something. Yeah. Whatever. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah. not, I like how they did it. Really like how they did it. Really like yep. how they did it. And because you don't have to chase it, you don't, have to like because you don't need the cards you don't have to go buy out a store you don't feel pressed to do it yeah that's that's the biggest thing and it's also possible because i I assume they're non-foil maybe they maybe they reprint the specializations in like the next supplemental set or they do uh like an armory maybe that's like an armory kit they do a like a foil version of it that way people can get their hands on it that's like the winner's thing is you know i don't know it's 100 percent see that yeah so well made as always. <laughs> We're just riding a high right now after seeing our spoilers today. It, yeah. It's Everything wild. is going so well. Mm-hmm. And then on top of that, you know, I think I think we have to talk ProQuest. Obviously, it's ProQuest season yeah. again. It's it's an interesting ProQuest season because I feel like this season is gonna probably have a little lower turnout in ProQuest season one in a lot of stores just because I think a lot of people can't go to France. And then on top of that, there's quite a few people who are almost protecting themselves from burnout. It like card game yeah, burnout is a very sure. real thing. It's very easy to burn out if you play a lot and you grind a lot. And I feel like there are quite a few people who are just going, you know, 
I'll probably play in one pro quest, maybe two, but I'm not going to have to go to every single one, grind best deck. I think there are a lot of people who are going to play their favorite deck. Yeah, the exception, of course. I mean, yeah. I was right. just to say there, except the exception, of course, is chain. You know, people, people are playing chain until, for reasons until it hits, and then, <laughs> then that's all she wrote. Yeah. No more Galaxy no. Black. What are we gonna do, man? With no Galaxy Black, I you know, I know it's how. really meta altering the, the the power level of Galaxy Black is just so high. Mm-hmm. I I don't understand why any deck doesn't run it. It's just so good. Do we want to talk about uh, talk about Vegas at all? Yeah, I mean, I think I think we have to talk about ProQuest a little bit, just in terms okay. of like the results and how okay, things are okay, going. Okay. Yeah, let's hit that. Um, I, I know we talked we talked about it in our group chat. We talked about it beforehand. I think ProQuest is now probably responsible for maybe my favorite one of my favorite LSS tweets of all time. Oh yeah, the the official Fab account. I'm gonna read it verbatim just because it's so good. I I pulled it up. The Living Legend leaderboard has been updated with the week two results from ProQuest. Dot, 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 dot. Chain's days are numbered. <laughs> it is the oh, most oh, ominous. Oh, yeah. It's so ominous. Like, I, I don't know. I feel like whoever wrote that tweet has been beat by Chain a bunch of times. Mm-hmm. They are ready to see him right off into the sunset on a horse right next to Starbo. <laughs> So I I don't know I I saw this week's did you see the numbers this week overall? Um I know the like over art like it's twenty it was twenty six for mm-hmm. chain. Yep. Um I don't know yep. the breakdown speci- of like specific numbers. No, what is it? Hit me. Gotcha. All right, yeah. So so here's the numbers. I pulled up the article just so we could talk about it. And in, in case anybody hasn't seen it, you know we always like to hit these things. Uh, Bravo. Starvo continues his his run of dominance. 97 events this weekend, and 38 of those events in 14 countries were won by Starvo. Uh, the headliners are Gregor Kowalski in Poland, Mario Abrantes. I hope that's right in Portugal. Um, someone in Canada that I'm going to be honest, I don't know how to say that name. And then Tarek Patel. Real, real quick segue, because that's what we do, into like a little nonsensical sidebar. I loved, I don't know if you saw, this week had a moment with Tarek and Zach um, on where it emphasizes why the three of us have moved to the Twitterverse in terms of fab. Oh, yeah. And Tarek posted, Chain is really close to Living Legend, almost makes us makes me want to play Chain to help get him out. Zach Bunn posted that, you know, he, or he might have posted that. He just posted was, a picture of him almost playing. It. Yeah. And then and somebody, then Tarek, Tarek commented, points. If he yeah. misses by four points, we know why. Because Zach was yep. playing Briar. And then yep. Zach tweeted a picture of Tarek playing also not Chain. Yeah. Yeah. Winning yeah. on Starvo. And he said, yeah, yeah. and then Tarek Tarek responded with, uh-oh, caught in 4K. Yeah. <laughs> so it was very well played. Moral well played. of the story, if you're not on Twitter, we highly recommend mm-hmm. it. Super fun community over there yeah. and a lot better interaction. So do yeah. that. Like just, just now, since we're talking about it, I think that Cody just messaged me because I think that he thinks mm-hmm. he dunked on us and he doesn't realize that <laughs> like we've been busy. We've been literally recording this. So yeah, I haven't, got, I haven't like, been on Twitter for a while. Yeah, I know. So I'm I'm looking right now. So um okay. why is Cody why is Cody betraying us? Is my big question. Like, <laughs> since when is I thought he, he not, was one of us. Yeah, since when is he not one of us? Or is he oh, you know what? No, it's a whole double agent thing. That's what it is. Thanks, man. I mean, I'll I'll edit this out. Um no, so Fresh and Buds wants to do they want to do like a draft competition against us? Apparently, which I'm all for. Mm. Like draft is my fucking are, shit. Are they going so. to Vegas? Like we'll hang out after an event and buy a oh, box. Yeah. Split it 100%. Um, let's, yeah, let's do it. Cool. Vegas. Do we want to say Saturday? Yeah, yeah I'm down okay. whenever. Cool. Vegas. What's the yeah. would that date be? The 11th. This 11th, is super think, good. Yeah. This is super entertaining. This is entertaining. Yeah, this is this is high quality podcasting right here. Live. We're live 
we're live podcasting a live tweet of I, I don't know if that's cool. That's not really Vegas, it's not really June eleventh, but... ten p.m. I'm in. Let's go. We'll do it our wherever. Room. Our room. Our room. <laughs> I don't. We don't have a table in our room, but bring lube. No. <laughs> 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 We don't have a table in our room. Can we not do it in our I room? I mean, I mean, we so we have like there's like a in, in, with Jason and I stayed there last year, and there's like a bar, so like, like a standing. We'll you out. could you we'll know do it on the bed. We'll make it work. We'll figure it out. Yeah, we'll circle around the bed. It won't be weird at all. I'm sure there's a place to do it at. We'll do it at like a random table in a bar in like the MGM. We'll all go to the MGM with the box. We'll, and we'll also, play fuck draft you, there. Cody. Fuck you for doing this. Yeah, how dare you, the Cody? That we're recording and like all of a sudden making us feel small. <laughs> okay. Cody's trying to get us in a fight with other content creators. I don't even know these guys. I'll like, be honest, I think Cody's just doing a fantastic job of like, because we're new to Twitter. <laughs> I think he's doing a great yeah. job of just like pulling in engagement. So thanks. We might, Good on you, bud. Yeah. We might hire Cody. Um, you could, you know what? We're going to dedicate 10% of the Outcast Haven budget to marketing um we're gonna hire cody so yeah, cody if you want to if you want to accept that role for the the salary start paying whatever us because it's a negative yeah. budget we, yeah we, currently we you money. actually yeah no, you, you have, have to, to you have to actually give us more in. money yeah yeah, yeah. you all have right. to pay 10 percent of our budget <laughs> all right wrapping it back <laughs> in getting it back yes together. yes Just let's go back to proquest so, yeah let's go yep. to proquest so we had 26 by chain, meaning we are now down to 22 wins that chain needs over the next two weeks to officially move into living legend status alongside Starvo upon the release of Uprising. Okay, you did this too. Is it 26 total or is it 26 this week too and then 13 it's, the week before? Right. So they had already added the 13 the week before. Okay. And then now they've added the 26. So the official tally by LSS, their updated leaderboard, is he has 912 points, which means he's 88 points away, which is 22 wins in ProQuest season. Gotcha. So he okay. needs 22 ProQuest wins to officially right off into the sunset, which... I will be honest, that math doesn't work out, but that's okay. Like, I, it, I trust that's what that they said. 88. That's true. Yeah. That's fine. 22 wins. Yeah. We can do this. So... So I guess this is where we take a pause and I ask you, what what do you think the difference is in, in your perspective? Because I, I have an opinion. I have a perspective. I think I've shared it in some group chats. What do you think is going to be the sentiment towards Starvo and Chain if they ride off in the sunset together? How do you think people are going to act? Now you're going to make me you're going to make me post this meme tomorrow because I was going to save it. But it's 100% <laughs> going to be. Loki's funeral is going to be chain. Yep. It's going to, I'm just going to put the community and then it's going to say chain and it's going to be Loki like at his mm-hmm. funeral. Cause he was a shit like, right? Like he, yeah. he fucked yep. around yep. quite a bit, you know, fucked around, found <laughs> out, right? And then it's going to be below that. It's going to be the community and it's going to be Leonidas and it's going to say Starvo and he's going to be the fucker getting kicked mm-hmm. in the well. It's like, that's how the yeah. community is letting go of chain versus how it's letting go of Starvo. Like, that's just yeah i think that that's gotta be i think everyone is happy to see star believe because it opens up mm-hmm. so much for deck building or for not deck right. building but it opens up so much for like in the meta what you can yeah. bring yeah just widens mm-hmm. the meta right but but with chain it's like he already went through that and then he came out the mm-hmm. other side being a much more fair deck right right yeah so people that were playing him it's not like oh fuck chain again it's like no (laughs) starvo again but yeah yeah it it felt like yeah it felt like in the early days if chain if if chain would have been allowed to living legend out or the early days when he was just siege chain i think people it would have been a very similar sentiment to where starvo is now but I think that Chain has seen what I, I I mentioned this in a in a group chat. I don't know which one, but I said the difference between Starvo and Chain is Starvo saw a nerf that did nothing. It it was com- he was completely unimpacted by the nerf. 
in a, in a meaningful way. I get that, you know, people will argue, oh, but it did, it did make a difference. And I'm like, look, man, if you put a, a two block break ground in versus a three block autumn's touch, it doesn't make a difference because you're not blocking with that card anyway. You know what like, match it made a difference for? The fucking mirror. And guess what? Was, they were running yeah. two blocks now, too. So Yeah. <laughs> So it it yeah the the mirror became yeah. like it, it, both mad, decks are affected now they're but that's with yeah. the community that's a grievance but that's with right. the community yeah. I felt like yeah. I was being actively sold bullshit by a lot yeah. of like higher players that were saying how this was such a great nerf it's like mm-hmm. I mean great nerf in it, what sense yeah. like great nerf in the sense that didn't change much and that's what you know <laughs> there shouldn't be much in the way yeah. of nerfs so good on them for that like yeah that was a hundred percent not. If you were peddling how great that was and how that was going to be the perfect hindrance to Starvo, I want an apology. Yeah, because I think there's only there's only two things you can say to the community. If you were peddling the idea or the concept that this nerf was really impactful, there are only two things that can be true about you peddling that nonsense. Either number one, you were flat out wrong and are an idiot. You absolutely unequivocally are stupid. There's no way that you can tell me that you genuinely believed it made a difference. Or you were trying to bait and switch everybody for the Mm -hmm. pro tour. Those are the only two things. And I will only accept those as options. I will not accept the option. Well, I thought, no, 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 no. If you thought that blood sheath Skeletta affected Viscerai, I believe you 100%. I think that you know that was true. And if it changed, I would be shocked as well. But changing attack cards that you were never going to block with in the first place from three blocks to two blocks did not change the deck. And I don't think anybody actually thought they did. So you either were A, lying to us, or B, you are stupid. Those are basically your options if you would like to admit where you are on the spectrum. I'll allow it. I'll allow it. That's offensive. This message brought to you by robert for the yes, record robert yeah. that was for yeah, you for the record because yeah, we all felt your pain for but you were very <laughs> um robert is our third by the way in vegas yeah for if, vegas if yeah. you guys aren't aware he's been on some of our yeah. older content but has yeah. has i don't know since stepped away and let jason and blake and i kind of run with the fab stuff but he follows yeah. us he's here yep. he's here with he's fab. here in fab Side note, he won't be in Vegas. Dane and I will have our challenge coins. Robert won't. So if you sit down across the team and you draw Robert, you cannot get yourself a challenge coin out of that one. We could talk about just, that. We could talk. Just so, or are we that afraid I don't, of Robert running? No, no, no. I'm just saying I don't, I don't want Robert. Yeah. Well, it's mainly the fact that like it costs me money to purchase. I have to purchase a mat to send to That's somebody. <laughs> So if, if Robert wants to pitch in on the mat, I'm 100% okay with it. But the mat has you, my, and Jason's faces on it. So I, I don't want to, I don't want to put, you know, I don't want to put Robert in a situation where he's responsible for any of that. So good point. Okay. But, but in Vegas, we will have our challenge coins. I took a picture of that. Made say something. So um, back way back, we're going to, we're going to dial it back like 11 steps and go back to the pro quest recap, because that's, where a lot of this conversation started. It looks like after those two, there was, well, a decent drop. So it went from 38 to 26 and then about an even drop from chain down to prism. She did, she did a good, she had 15 more events that she won. Um, I speaking of a very expensive deck, that will be the deck that will be painful when at living legends, if they don't have a format waiting for it, because I'll tell you what people with their like $5,000 prism decks are going to be like, bro, can we get that Living Legends format? I need to play this deck. I didn't sell my car to buy these cold foil auras so that I could keep it in a deck box. So mm-hmm. she had 15. After that, I guess this would be my question. What do you think was the winningest deck after those three? Mm. Shit. Lex, no. Brian? It's not. I thought you were gonna say Shiana. It's not Shiana. No, 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 no. I was, I was gonna say shit because <laughs> I don't know. I literally don't yeah. know. Briar. It is Briar. Briar had eight yeah. wins. Nice. Uh, she got she got eight wins. So Zach Bun was one of them. He got his. I know he got his win and immediately posted. He's going to France. So yeah. that's yeah, that's yeah. pretty cool. He's a Star Wars celebration right now, which looks fucking sweet. <laughs> super jealous. Yeah, super, super jealous, jealous of that. 
also also jealous of Tarek, who apparently has a bottomless wallet because Tarek said he's going to take like a five week vacation Dude's in Europe before he goes. So yeah. I, I mean, I get that, but they still have a still, like, you know, he doesn't have kids. I suppose that's the biggest thing. <laughs> Whenever someone talks about like, oh, you must have like like a great. I, I mean, the biggest contributor mm-hmm. to people being able to do whatever they want, I swear, is like lack of children. Lack and of also children. having a saint of a partner if they are. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The yeah the partner is very important. Mm-hmm. Um, we wouldn't be going to Vegas if we didn't have saints or partners. So that is truth. <laughs> um, yeah. Let's see. So Lexi got herself three wins, which is really cool. It's cool to see her do it in the in a field that's dominated by Sarvo. Uh, breakout contender Reinar, who got himself a win. And the final winners this week are the classic guardian himself, Bravo the Showstopper, Clark Jansen. I don't know who you are, but respect. I appreciate you. I love that you went with the OG. We had a mechanologist win. We had a Dorinthia Iron Song win in Indonesia, a Katsu win, and finally the Grandfather of Eternity got a win. And it looks like there are four heroes who have yet to claim a winner circle this ProQuest season. Azalea, who got a top eight. So again, huge shout out to Ricardo Wynn. Uh, got himself a top eight with Azalea. Uh, Kano got himself into the finals, which is brutal to see that loss. And Leviya and Sir Bolton. I think we we joked about this last little section, but I think the most respect has to go out to the people who had so much disrespect for the field that they played into. Yeah. They showed up with young heroes. And more <laughs> importantly, <Too> top hated. <laughs> Yeah, more because so typically you assume those are like <clears throat> data, data in you know inefficiencies or imperfections. Like mm. somebody messed up, they accidentally put Bolton instead of Bolton Breaker of you know or Sir Bolton Breaker of Dawn or whatever. Right. But uh, no, <laughs> there was a player. <laughs> I I can barely see this with a straight face, only because I I don't know this guy. I know nothing about him. But I have to believe that he either A, lost a bet, or B, did maybe the most disrespectful thing in FAB history when he showed up to a field of players with young chain in a constructed event and got top eight. Yeah. And and I, I want people to understand, I say that that's disrespectful because there is an adult version of chain. He didn't have to do anything to his deck to change it to play adult chain. If you showed up with Ira, that's different because there, there's not an adult Ira. You couldn't just swap the hero in your deck. And, and it's a token, right? Like this isn't Shiana where he would have gone, oh, I, you know, I, I only have the one Shiana. I'll just play it. He showed up with young chain. And at that shop, there should be a bulk box with an adult chain that he could have put in there mm-hmm. because he had a constructed deck. But no, 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 no. This man showed up with young chain. It said, I have no respect for anyone in this room, and I think I will win with Young Chain. I will start with a 20 health deficit, and I will dominate all of you. He could have he could have just been fucking around, too. A hundred percent. Yeah, I don't oh, think that 100%. had to be like the disrespect thing, but it was super funny. And I... It, in my head, that's the only acceptable logic. Yeah, that's fair. I'm just picturing Pat showing up like, I need a challenge, and you motherfuckers aren't giving it to me, so I'm just going to start with Half-Life. <laughs> <laughs> Pat would just talk the whole time about how we all sucked and how we weren't good because mm-hmm. of that. he he would say and it the out whole loud. Time you would be thinking, God, this is such a good dude. Like he's so nice. He's one of my favorite right. people, hands down, to play against. Right. Even though I don't know, I've only ever beat. The only time I've beat him was when I was teaching him Prism, at, like how to play into Prism on Chain. Yeah, at Cincinnati, I beat him like gotcha. two games, and those are the only wins I think I've ever taken off of him. Cause he's just like a machine. He's like a robot, I guess that has mm-hmm. yeah. you know, human tendencies, I suppose. But yep. 
he's so much fun to play against because he's just so nice the whole time. And it's just like he's joking and bantering, yeah. and it's like he's like mm-hmm. he's kicking the shit out of you, but he's like making sure yeah. that you're having a good time. And it's like I am. Please do this again. One, one of my favorite Pat matches ever to watch is way back from RTN season when he played Dagan in the final at Atlantis down in Mankato only because Dagan barely speaks when he plays like Dagan will declare his things. Yeah. He'll, he'll state, a, he'll explain the exact game state. And at one point, Pat talked solid for 30 seconds. And at that point, I don't think he really knew Dagan now, like they know each other, they talk a fair amount. So it's, it would be a different interaction, but they, at that point, I don't think they knew each other very well. And Pat just talked for a solid 30 seconds straight. He goes, I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm over here playing the game. I bet, I, bet the, I bet this guy's asking himself, like, what am I doing? Why am I playing this guy? Why won't he shut up? Why can't I play flesh and blood without this person talking nonstop to me for like 10 minutes straight? Why won't he shut up? Would you like to do anything? You're going to defend. That's fine. You're trying to fatigue me. It's okay. I'm not worried about it. Let's do the next thing. I'm going to go ahead and make a shackle <laughs> and just looked it right in the eyes. Just the whole time. <laughs> just nonstop. The entire match of fatigue Katsu into chain. And he just never stopped talking for the entirety of the event. It's magnificent. Great. All right. <laughs> on to stuff that people will relate to and like know what yeah. we're talking about. Cause we should probably wrap that back in. <laughs> and That's not fair. that you I, guys probably don't all want to hear about every one of our locals and how great they are. Cause we do have a pretty great yep. local scene, but no, nice um, scene. Vegas just... it's official. At least with, I'm pretty sure. Mm-hmm. So the combat chain, the Tom. Um, oh, what's that? Oh, we have a an update. Adam Philip Chuck. Oh man, I wow. Farm Toolery. Oh, that's what it was, not Tom. Adam. So like, we've got people that are gonna draft against us. Like, we'll figure out teams. We'll 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 team draft. Be a good time. Yeah. I'm talking shit. Getting hit. All right. What else we got? Oh yeah, I mean. I mean, we got to talk about Vegas and what we think it. is. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm excited for it. I was. Are you gonna be good you know, at I was, this set, Blake? I hope so. Are you gonna... <laughs> Look, I know that I'm gonna do good for one reason and one reason only. I am a, a maestro when it comes to drafting Katsu. When it comes to drafting Ninja, I. I am an aficionado. It is what I do. I'm good at it. So they're giving me another ninja, which means I'm ready to go. Yeah. I I don't play. I play a decent, I, not a decent amount. I play some ninja. I have played ninja historically. I played it during last RTN season and topped with him. Um, but I, uh, yeah, I... I don't, I don't know. He's my best. It's him or Kano. Those are like my two best draft mm-hmm. classes for some reason. The irony of ninjas, like I'm a guardian. We got Oldham and I just punted every, every time I drafted in tails, I could, I either tried to draft Oldham and I had a terrible deck or I tried to draft Briar and I sat in the middle of people two on either side of me drafting Briar. And I was the fifth person drafting in the dead center of the group. So, yeah, that was uh, that was fun though. That was a, a five mm. briar table. Good yeah, time. yeah, yep. I, I remember looking over and seeing someone flip over Lexi, and the other two people flip over Oldham. I thought to myself, "That's going to be the best Lexi deck, that, deck that's ever been drafted," mm-hmm. because nobody even tried to take his cards, and he was like, "Yeah, I have like ten red arrows." <laughs> <laughs> Arr, whoops! You're like, "Whoa." <laughs> Um, yeah, so I lost my train of thought, but I'm going to wrap it back in here and we're going to figure it out. Um, yeah. I'm ready. That's what it is. So draft. I think that you're going to be fine this draft. Jason's yeah. this time. If anyone struggles, I think it might be me because I think I might try to force Icelander or mm. Dromai too much. I th- this, is, I, this is your chance, yeah. You know, like I've not had a bad set, like one where like I just like I couldn't figure out games. Like I did 
well. Yeah. Like, that's my one claim to fame is like my my sealed <laughs> my sealed uh success. Your sealed not EOI. ability. Why can't I think of E L O. E L O. I'm like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my sealed EOI. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, so that's funny. That's a uh, Sarah would get that reference. Yeah, your your evidence of insurability. <laughs> <laughs> I'm such a fucking moron. Um, <laughs> yeah, so my CLO is like literally my only claim to fame, and it's not even that great. Mm-hmm. It's just I've done well in the events that I've done that have been rated with seal. Better than mine. Let's see. So <laughs> I got to keep that up. Um, yeah, I am super excited to do the premiere because that's going to be fucking wild i missed it last year you and jason both got to go and we did yeah now it's me you and robert the team event mm-hmm. taking blitz way too seriously mm-hmm. like i love the fact that we spent like all day saturday <laughs> just grinding tons of blitz matchups just yeah. like cool this is our life now this is what we're going to take yeah really and i mean serious. we very clearly landed on the best combination being team brute um Reiner, Leviat, and KO. KO. Yep. It's just you can't beat it. We're you can't just gonna beat high it. roll every. You match. don't. You don't even need to have an A, B, or C. You tell your opponents what you're playing, and you let them choose. But it doesn't matter because you're so good. You just dominate them. Let's see, I want to do Team Ninja. I want. I think we should do Ira, Katsu, Benji. My biggest concern is what we give Robert in that case because he's never even played a ninja. All he knows about ninja is how Ira. to troll Bergy for it. You, that's true you don't even have to know how to play the game and you can man. win that's with ira not, yeah you can jesus we don't even need honestly we don't even really need robert we could just find a monkey and be like this yep. is yep. this ira deck you just flip and play your options are somebody who eats crayons or an actual monkey and they could play ira <laughs> um no i like i like how what we've narrowed down so far i think i'm think mm-hmm. we're feeling, feeling good about it you know yeah and I, I love our team theme i've got yeah i don't know if my helmet came today i'm i got mm, I, okay. did i tell you i bought an arm yeah helmet. yeah yeah like i'm painting I, i'm doing the hp i'm gonna wear i'm gonna wear the bandana the, yeah x-pac right yep x-pac baby so, so we're leaning so, super yeah. far into the wrestling thing because it's already been around like he had like the new wraith yep. order and yep, the rate the we got the wraith pack. world order and the wolf yeah. pack. oh yeah. yeah that's what it was and then you yep. get the wolf pack and it's like okay cool this is wrestling is just tied into this yep we can lean into that fucking team degeneration x yeah because because why not it's you know it's the most appropriate wrestling team name also to be fair, there might be a modern team that fits our motif and style better, but I haven't watched professional wrestling yeah, that's true. since Sting used to dress up as Sting to trick people into having him around where he would like have his face paint on and then he would wear the fake Sting mask over his makeup yeah. and he'd stand around and act like Sting. He was the fake Sting and then he would take the mask off and everyone would go... Yeah. Even though you could see his face paint on the sides. <laughs> I I had a thought because I was thinking like, okay, so you're going to be going as X-Pac, right? And I was like, okay, I don't have long hair. Have to. So like, I was trying to think like who I could be if we're actually going with people. And I was, no, I, I don't know if I should say this actually, but I was like, Robert could be China, but that's kind of racist. So <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, little, no, we, yeah. can't, we can't do that because do I, that, that was yeah. that was Triple H's like bodyguard, right? For his act, yeah, it was it's yeah. fair, yep. But that's yeah. <laughs> I mean, Robert, Robert's Robert could do the slicked back hair and just he rock could. the Triple H. Yeah, that's true. I don't know that we could convince him. I don't think that we could. I don't think that we should actually be the people. Like you should just have. We could have no, the looks, yeah, yeah. right? Like you're gonna the have looks, the X Pac yeah. look. I'll have yeah. like, the HBK look, like. Yeah, Maybe mainly because I don't I don't think that Robert should wear the little like speedo style bottom that they often wear, you know. Dude, they could do fatigues. I, it's like the big it's the army, right? Like they I mean, they fucking went over to WCW in a goddamn army jeep. <laughs> 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 
I, I still think to this day, the best, my favorite Degeneration X thing ever that was so Degeneration X was the uh, HBK wore the belt with like nothing else on. Just oh. had the belt. Dude, I I love the McMahon. When they when they were doing the making fun yes. of McMahon, like Vince McMahon and his kid, like that was so funny. Yeah, Vince and shit. I I just I loved love the hopping around that HBK was doing, dude. Yeah, <laughs> I I just love the. I think I think I I felt like we truly had to embrace the Generation X yeah. when I was looking through the gifts that related to them, and there was like the double stack suck it thing where oh, the yeah. guy in the front's doing the cross and the other guy behind him is just like we're gonna we're gonna the... triple we're gonna triple stack suck it if we win yeah like it yep. just has to happen so. it just has to happen and it's no disrespect to the people that were doing it too but i did yes, i did is. enjoy it, it has to it... <laughs> only if it's people that cody referenced that were challenging if it's if it's oh, them yeah. specifically they're gonna get it with Full on, you know, like mm-hmm. the Generation X attitude, disrespect. You know, like Coach Kent Murphy says, you got to disrespect their families. You got to. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to let them know. All right, yeah. cool. Well, we went off on a tangent, but anything that's else? What we do. Like, I don't, I don't think so. I, think I don't think we have anything it. right now. We're yeah. coming up on like fifty minutes, so I'm cool wrapping up yeah. with whatever i think it's it's like that sweet spot where people will actually listen to us they want to listen i to know us. we kept it <laughs> we did an okay job of keeping it like mm-hmm. rolling despite jason not being here to just like fill in yeah. with anger and like fill in with yeah. like old man references and stuff when you know when <laughs> stuff starts to lull you know he kind of yeah. pops in with like some weird back in my day um no so yeah definitely check us out on twitter we've got our links uh mm-hmm. or our our uh, tags up above our names here on the video. They'll be in the video description as well. We are basically heading towards 1600 subs on our YouTube channel. So if you're just mm-hmm. a listener, would love you to hop over there and sub because when we do hit 1600, uh, we're going to be doing a giveaway. We're at 1529 right now. Mm-hmm. So 70 more to go there ish. I don't know what we're actually at. That was just what I checked earlier today. We've been going up pretty steadily the last couple weeks, yeah. but yeah, yeah, just trying to promote some growth there. And then also be on the lookout on our Twitter or on our each of our individual Twitters because we mm-hmm. each took, we got three mats. We got the Bone Throne. Why can't I never remember the real name? Doomsday, the Doomsday mat. That's what I'm going to be mm-hmm. giving away on mine as well as a play set of the Heralds of Rebirth. Blake, you got the Celestial Cataclysm. Cataclysm, yep. Cataclysm. And the play set of Rebirths. And then Jason's gonna have the eclipse and eclipse of yeah. All of us just doing them on our own on our individual Twitter. So be sure to follow us there as well to see that when it comes up. God, other than that, we got like the new. We I, I redid our like background and everything like that. Mm-hmm. And so that's neat. Had some fun toying around with the borders. If you're listening, check them out because that was. I'm proud of that. And a little, little pat on my back. I like what I did with those. Um, that's all I got, man. That's it. Appreciate you guys hanging yeah. out. And we will talk to you all next week. Yep. Peace. Peace.